Hi, hello, and welcome to another edition of China Teacher, where I share with you what it is like to be an English teacher in China. Today, we're going to talk about another kind of job that you can do as an English teacher here in China. That is language consulting. So, without further ado, let us roll that intro and see you on the other side to talk about what you can do in your spare time. Be a real bad boy. Welcome back, guys. Well, it is no secret that all around China we see all kinds of translations that are absolutely pathetic, that are wrong, incorrect, and there's all kinds of problems with these kind of translations. You can see it in books, you can see it in magazines, you can see it in shopping malls,、um, you can see it on the roads. So, I would like to start by telling you a little bit about my own experience in this department. So, my experience in this in this kind of work、uh, started in 2007.、Um, what I decided to do at the time was to drive around the city, taking pictures of road signs that had incorrect translations, and I collected those pictures and put them together into like a small little book that I printed in my office. And、um, I took those those books and I distributed them to some people that I knew in government. I said, like, look, guys, if you feel like you would like to. Um, check these things, or fix them, or correct them. I'll be happy to help you. It's just I would like to improve the image of the city, and and、uh, I think that there's something I can do.、Um, well, that actually led to a quite large number of cooperations that I've done with the government in terms of translation and proofreading and things like that. So what I would like to do today is. Um, share with you some of the most common mistakes that I find in either road signs or commercial、um, banners or advertisements or magazines and books like that、uh, and things like that、um, that have incorrect translations. So, without further ado, let us start talking about the most common mistakes in translation. I guess that the first the first thing to to note is that there are some translations that are just plain and simple incorrect. You know, they they just keyed something into Baidu translation、uh, in Chinese, and whatever is spit it out, that's what they copied and pasted, and it just makes absolutely no sense.、Um, so as I explain these, I will show you some examples of those,、uh, and you'll understand what I mean. So those are quite easy to spot because. There's almost no connection whatsoever to what they could be trying to say, so that those are easy to spot. That's category number one, just wrong translation, nothing to do with what they want to say.、Um, one other problem, one of the things that 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 happens with these kind of automatic translations is that. Translators are very good, but they they don't know all the grammar rules. They they can't really differentiate sometimes between a noun or or a verb or an adjective. For example, you could have perfect and perfect. Well, it's spelled the same thing. It's spell spelled the same way, but but the translator doesn't know which part of a speech you are using, and and because of that, then it's going to throw out something that's that's completely out of whack. So. The, the the amount of times that I've seen people rely on translations, just the first thing that the translator throws at you,、uh, it's it's enormous and it's 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 sad because it doesn't cost too much to ask a foreigner to check your documents. I mean, particularly the government、uh, when it comes to government projects,、uh, this is a very good source of income. You can charge them per hour your regular fee, but、um, Once you cooperate with governments, it, it improves your your standing in in the city or the locality where you are. You are regarded as somebody who who is trying to give something back to the community. So yeah, it's it's you don't need to charge too much. But these kind of projects, for example, how much would it cost to change all the road signs in the city? And they do this every now and then. Well, it's it's something that goes in the millions and millions of RMB. Well, if you're gonna pay me five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand RMB to check some translations,、uh, well, 
how much is that compared to the total cost of the project is actually very very small and might be a little bit of money for you well, might be good money if all it takes is a few weeks of your time so it, yeah it, it's something that's worth considering um uh, as a side job it's not it's not permanent but it's something that comes as projects so yeah keep an eye on that so let's continue with some other common mistakes another thing that i see as a very common mistake is they use the wrong word so the translation could be similar uh, you could understand something similar or in Chinese there's only one word or there are no specific words the best example that I have is a picture that I can show you here where they've translated um, which is like a sports center they translated it into gym as in the place a fitness center so to, so to speak so obviously obviously it's it's not entirely wrong but it's not the right word this is basically in reference to a stadium or to a sports arena um so there are other words that are more appropriate to to indicate um the place where the city comes to see events like big sports events those are at sports arena or it's a stadium uh, at least but not a gym so this is a very clear example of, of what i'm talking about the words are related but it's not the right word um, for example here's another picture where i can show you they say choose the right road what they're trying to say here is choose the right lane um, the road takes me in a certain direction so if i know which way i'm going well i'm on the right road i might not be on the right lane because this is the lane for turning right or this is the lane for turning left uh, but I'm definitely on the right road so yeah this this kind of incorrect use of certain words is quite common you you are able to to pinpoint this if you just flip through an English dictionary you'll see what the differences are it's quite easy to spot um, another thing that I that I see quite often is what I call inconsistency well in Chinese um, sometimes what you see is they will use the name of a place in Chinese for example something in in the city where I live the there's a place called Songshan Lake so in some road signs you'll find it as Songshan Hu which is Chinese for lake or in others you'll find it as Songshan Lake um, it's a little bit disturbing to see the lack of standard there are standards but for some reason they haven't been unified uh, or they're not shared there's no no office that handles centralized uh, information so everybody does whatever they can so you go from one district to another and the signage is completely different and well it, it makes for some confusion because sometimes you're driving through the city and if you don't know Chinese and you don't know what who is, then you're suddenly lost. You don't know if you're going to Sunshine Lake or Sunshine, Sunshine something else. So just just a, a little reminder there. The standard is the name of the place is in Chinese. So in this case would be Songshang, but what it is, it would be in English. So it would be a lake. Um, here's another example. Um, the area is known as Nanchen but they take in turn to to represent city so they left it as nan city which is which is wrong if you're going to translate everything nan turn would be south city which still doesn't make sense i mean it's not according it's not not that it doesn't make sense it's just not according to the standard the place is called nan Cheng, and it's a road so it's nan Cheng road or nan Cheng avenue um, so you get my drift it's important to to communicate to the people that you are cooperating with that they need to have a standard you need to use everything uh, the same way throughout uh, the whole city or the whole place so that there is consistency in the message um, and then there's there's one other type of mistake which I find really really interesting it's happened to me when I worked in certain projects um, when I worked in the Greenway project, which is like a huge um, bicycle lane throughout the whole uh, province of Guangdong, um, I worked in the Dongguan 
side of the project, um, I I send my proposal to them and I say like, look, I would like you to include quality control. Just pay me a little bit of money, you know, like five thousand RMB, and I will go a few days to the factories to check that the factories are producing these things without mistakes because a lot of the mistakes and and this is one thing that I can share with you a lot of mistakes that happen don't happen in a translation you can sit down and work out the perfect translation send the document to the factories and the guys in the factories who do the design they use I don't know AutoCAD or Corel whatever software they're using well sometimes I need to type the things again or they need to copy paste and they make mistakes while they're doing that so um, this leads to, to problems like this. If you take a look at this picture here, it says hypo e a i t. Well, there's a mistake because hypo basically they're trying to say is, is the secondary. Yeah, it's secondary, not the main, not the most important one. It's a secondary. And the <laughs> E-A-I-T, I can clearly see that something, sorry, saw an X and thought it was an A. So instead of secondary exit, it becomes hypo E-A-I-T. Those are mistakes that happen at the factory. And another challenge that that we have when we when we try to work as translators or, or proofreaders or copyrights is, um, when we, we come across some text that it's written in a poetic way, which is something that Chinese people do, the Chinese government does that a lot, they like to use certain, certain Chinese ways of expressing things. They love numbers. For example, certain policies, they will, they will like to play with the numbers. So it'd be three areas, three ring roads, and three green belts. So... Sometimes when you try to put that together in a sentence or in a title, it's just going to be clunky. Um, so you need to you need to communicate with the customer and and come to some kind of agreement, some kind of of commitment uh, that we are going to sacrifice a little bit of the poetic um, image for a more clear and concise uh, information. And sometimes what happens is that they they don't really understand the connotations of what they're writing. I'm just going to give you an example. This was a huge, huge thing in 2008, I think. They decided to have a competition among English teachers, Chinese English teachers in the city, to create a new slogan for the city, the city of Dongguan. And the the winner was a teacher from uh, the town i think it was called Dongkeng, and okay so it was approved and they started to produce thousands i'm talking millions of stickers t-shirts uh, all kinds of banners advertisements all over the city we're talking a city of 12 million people this slogan was to be everywhere in notebooks in pens hats stationery all kinds of things and the slogan that was chosen was dongguan civilization is created by you here is the problem with that when when they came to the office where i was working like what do you think of this i was like well there's a huge problem right here and let me explain what I said to them and, and what I think. And, and if you disagree with me, just leave your comments down here and, and uh, we keep the conversation going. But if there is something that China is very, very famous for, is this very long civilization, 5,000 years of civilization, uh, if I'm correct. So here's the thing. When you say that Dongguan civilization is created by you, Dongguan already has 5,000 years of civilization. So the word created means something that doesn't exist. We're going to create something that doesn't exist. So in a way, it is denying the existence of the 5,000 years of civilization. And this was the winning slogan. So I told them in a couple of minutes, like, look, I think this is wrong because, well, the, the verb create means 
you make something that didn't exist before, but Dongguan has 5,000 years of civilization. So there, that's a contradiction right there. And I, I could see everybody running around in panic, like, what oh, shit, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? So basically, they 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 started like brainstorming with a, a couple of, of people that were working with me, some translators from, from the Foreign Affairs Bureau. What can we do? What can we do? I said, like, look, what are you trying to say? And they were trying to say that they were trying to involve the newcomers to the city, uh, the people from different places, different provinces, different cities that come to the city to live and work and stay whether it be Chinese or foreigners like myself. And they, they coined a term called the Xinguan Ren, which is the new Dongguanese person. So this is long and was targeted as, as making them feel welcome and involved, making us feel involved in, in the, the growth of the city, the development of the city. So one of the things that I suggested, well, look, on the top of my head, I, I this is five minutes, okay? <laughs> Uh, I suggested, look, the future of the Guan depends on you. Because you could be an old timer or a newcomer, it doesn't matter. You can be a local person, a new person. The future of the Guan depends on you. And they run with that message to the mayor's office. They approved it. And then what happened was they didn't want to, again, they didn't want to admit that they messed up. So they stopped production of whatever they had and they released this new production. So now when you walk around the city, you can see both signs, both slogans uh, in the same places. I mean, in the same sh the same kind of shirt or the same kind of stationery or the same kind of sticker on the buses. Uh, some will say Dongguan civilization is created by you and others will say the future of Dongguan depends on you. Funny, funny how these things happen is 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 the lack of knowledge as to what are they trying to say so as i said this is a a, a side job that can give you a lot of reward because basically you are helping to improve the image of the city and it can also be a good source of income and your reputation it grows with every contribution that you make to the city so as i mentioned before if you want to create your own brand, if you want to create your own image, collaborating with the government is a great way of doing that. Um, I even went as far as to suggest uh, to create a, a special office that handles, uh, in particular, commercial signage. Um, I feel that the government spends a lot of time, effort and money uh, in, into correcting all these road signs. Um, still a lot to do, but at least they make an effort. But these business owners, uh, these large companies that decide to, for example, real estate companies, right? Real estate developers, they advertise in English for whom? They have these huge banners and these huge, um, like they cover the construction site in these banners that they print with advertisement and they decide to write the most ridiculous things in English. My point is, who are they advertising for? Why are they using English? Foreigners don't buy homes in China. Very few. So why why do you need to advertise in English? Ah, oh, because it makes it look more exclusive. It makes it look more, more sophisticated, modern, more Western. I don't know. For whatever reason, for whatever marketing reason, they use English. I say, like, look, perhaps the city should have a legislation about this. Because you don't allow, as, as you saw in the, the cigarette, the smoking, the smoking video that I posted, you're not allowed to display people smoking on camera. You're not allowed to use naked ladies or, or ladies in bikinis to advertise different things. So there are some policies about what you can do or not do in your advertisement. Well, how about you're not allowed to post anything in English if it hasn't been approved by this particular office. So what I gave the government was an idea to create a department in which any advertisement that was going to be displayed in public that affects the image of the city would have to be proofread or translated by 
a specific department. Um, the same way that you renew your licenses, you ask the people, hey, do you have any kind of advertisement in English? If not, you need, if you do, then you have to have it certified to be proper uh, before you go to print. So it, it's a new, it's a new business venture for, for the city, you know, like offering this translation services, this translation proofreading services, and at the same time policing um, the, the correct usage of English. So um, I don't know, I thought it would be a good idea, but uh, that's, that's what happens with, with the government. Sometimes one thing comes one year, comes out the other. I thought it was a great idea. It didn't go anywhere. So there you go. So to wrap this video, I would like to remind you that as an English teacher, you have information, you have tools, you have resources and knowledge that can be very useful to the community where you live. And that involvement in the community makes you an important member of the community. That is something you should not deny yourself the opportunity of taking advantage of. You can contribute to the community where you are and that in turn will benefit you timefold. So guys, I would like to wrap up this video then with uh, the question of the day. I would like to know what other kind of jobs do you think we can do uh, uh, apart from teaching with our particular skill set? Um, this is one of the ones that I've been doing for the last 10 years and it's brought me quite a lot of reputation and it's brought me quite a bit of money. Um, but if you have any other suggestions, any ideas, or if you have any questions or, or comments about this particular video, then just leave it down here and we keep the conversation going. All right. Well, guys, remember, you know the drill, like, comment, share this video to your heart's content. Okay. I don't care. Put it anywhere you want. You, you have my permission here on camera that you can share this video wherever you want. What I want is my message to be seen. So go ahead and share it. And if you like the content of this video and you would like to see a, a new video every time that I showed one, that every time that I publish one, just click the subscribe button and you'll be notified when I put one up. All right. So until the next video, keep well.